Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm Kamisha. Oh, nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah I want to know has a yeah. time yeah. to ride yeah. on yeah. 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 Yeah.
both Cam and Nancy. I don't have my own blog. Um, I, I let somebody else do all that for me. The editing and the marketing and the, you know, uh, readership and all that kind of stuff. So I, so that's why I can do it um, and still keep a real job and not drive myself crazy. So. <laughs> oh yeah. I work full time too outside of my website. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, I, th I mean, that's, I'm at Policy Mike uh, primarily. I do other stuff uh, for the Hill and some other national, for, uh, national political um, level. Yeah. So. You have to feel like I am compelled to write whatever it is I'm writing. You can't just like look at the internet and say, well, there's a need for such and such a site, so I guess I'm going to write it. Mm -hmm. You're going to burn out in, and by the way, the audience is, is going to see that you're inauthentic and you will not get a following that way. You have to find something that is like burning in your being <coughs> so much that you just have to let it out. Yeah. And audiences respond to that sort of passion, and that passion will also keep you going. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if you're only passionate about that for six months, and you're like, okay, I don't want to write about this anymore because I was really super passionate, and then it's like eating too much ice cream. <laughs> you're, like, <Yeah. laughs> you're like, oh, I'm going to be sick if I look at them again. <laughs> That's how I am with politics. We were talking about that earlier. I get really passionate about politics. And then I'm just like, nope, I don't want to look at it. I don't want to look at it because it upsets me. Um, mm -hmm. And it's it's okay to take those breaks and go, you know, submit content to a website that you're really thrilled with, or start another blog. Right. And <laughs> say, I have I have 15 different dead blogs out there. Yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> that I'm just like, oh, I'm bored with you now. Ah. Come on. <laughs> I started the community website because I have ADD. I'm like, okay, this way I have 15 different places, but if I want to be passionate about it here, I can be passionate about it here. And the great part is I got other people that were in the same boat. So I said, hey, you know what? I write about this primarily, but I'm also really passionate about these few other things. And I want to find a place to write about those. So it's, it's, good, it's a good traffic driver to your personal blog that you want to create this big space and a readership, if you say, okay, yeah, this is my primary interest, but I'm also interested in other things, and you submit to other sites, or you join discussions on other sites, because those can track back to your page. Yeah. Yeah. And I think Heather knows a little bit about blogging her passion with the <laughs> she does. Well, I, there's, there's three things I never do. I never weigh myself. <laughs> Meaning that I never judge uh, how much wine I had with dinner, <laughs> and uh, I never check Google Analytics. That's why I love it ever, because it will make you crazy. And um, you know, kind of my my thing is, um, I get re-inspired when the crazy people comment. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I like to, because I'm right back. Um, I, I know. I watched like, you do it, <laughs> and this is how you're stupid. So, um, so I, yeah, I, that's what kind of floats my boat. I don't care how many people read it. I just want that one crazy person <laughs> to try to match wits with me. <laughs> Everybody's got their thing, right? You guys like chocolate. I like crazy people. So. Um, you know, that's, that's kind of how I measure my, I mean, it's yeah. fun to be like, oh, 800 people read that article or whatever, you know, that's, that's yeah. fun. But, nice. but the truth is, you're never as great as they say you are, and you're never as bad as they say you are. So. Exactly. What are some of the comments that the crazy people make? I mean, that well, floats your boat. I mean, um, <laughs> oh, you know, I don't know. President Obama was born in Kenya? <laughs> Stuff like that? You know, like, just, just people who are completely on the opposite end of the political spectrum and have a real... Uh, belief that, you know, there's no place for government in our lives, mm -hmm. and they come up with some pretty, what I think is outrageous stuff. Um, a little bit of detachment from reality. Yeah, like, <laughs> like the Department of Transportation should be abolished, and transportation should be a state issue, <laughs> because it's good for our economy when, when our trucks get to the border of Georgia and have to offload everything into a horse and buggy because Georgia didn't <laughs> pave their roads. So, you know, things like that, things like that, that just, you know. I like to, well, that's uh, when I first started blogging. They called that trolls. Yeah. 
Yes. And because uh, the, it happened to me once like after mm -hmm. I've been blogging for a while, and I was just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> We, and uh, it, th there are people that actually search out that's certain like types you. of articles just so that they can, yeah. Yeah, like stir the pot. And I mean, I guess there's a place for it for inspiration, but it can also. <laughs> well, it's fun, you know, when you're when you're writing something that's so you know hot as politics. Um, it, it's fun, you know. Sometimes I know I giggle to myself. I know I'm like, ooh, that's a, that's gonna work. You know, that's yeah. gonna that's gonna light a fire under some folks. You can do it on purpose, and and it, you know, <laughs> it's fun. It um, you know, you know, it kind of gives you, um, like if you were writing a eat healthy website, you would you would smile at yourself uh, internally when you're writing if you thought that's gonna help somebody really get healthy. That's mm -hmm. gonna help somebody lose that extra 25 pounds or whatever. So it's the same thing. It's just mine mm -hmm. is a little. More perverse. Okay. We have a word for it in this, in, actually in the scrapbook industry, it's smack. There are actually Ooh. entire blogs that have been set up for the entire purpose of allowing people to use the comments on the blogs to post anonymous trash about the big names in the scrapbook industry. They call them smack blogs. They're like, you know, high school wow. slang books. <laughs> yeah. and, wow. and, and what what the people who work at the level of the industry that I do always say to each other is, hey, if the smack block is talking about you, you're good. Right? <laughs> yeah. If they ain't talking about you, you're in trouble <laughs> because you're not relevant anymore. They don't care about you. So if, if they're talking trash, that means you're important enough to talk trash about. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. And you, I think the, the big thing, too, about your comments is, there's a level. Like if I'm going at it with Nancy because I disagree with her on, uh, you know, some craft, which I, can't, <laughs> I, I don't even know the right terminology. Which is <laughs> some scrap, glue gun. Some scrap, right? Some glue gun. Yes. There we go. <laughs> so if I, if I'm, you know, if we're going round and round about what the better glue gun is, there's a limit when I call her a glue gun Nazi. You know that. I mean, like there's, you know, at, at some point. Uh, you know, you can trash my words, you can trash my thoughts, you can trash my blog, you can do whatever you want. There's a but you, for, you bring that home to me and we're done talking. You have yeah. closed this mm -hmm. conversation. What is it? They, I think that's, um, I think it's Poe's Law, where no matter what argument there is on the internet, eventually it's going to delve into somebody uh, call God, somebody else. Uh, Godwin's Law. Godwin's no, Law. Yeah. I get Godwin's yeah. and Poe's confused. As, what a, does that as mean? the length of an online discussion increases, the chances of somebody mentioning Hitler or the Nazis emerges one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and which one's Poe's Law? I, I, I haven't heard of that one. Oh, okay. And if Nancy would stop trying to force me to buy that glue gun, I would not have to call her Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> when God wins law, you automatically lose the argument. <laughs> right, yeah, right. Yeah, that, yeah. Did you, That's yeah, kind of I have a question, and very, very basic. Um, how do you even start? I mean, what do you, you know, you hear WordPress, you hear different, but where, what's the, where's the very beginning? What do you suggest for the very beginning? Um, coming up with an idea that you want to talk about. And it doesn't matter if you want to talk about what you made for breakfast that day, or Sunday. if it, you want to talk about, you know, the state of affairs in the world and whatnot. Um, there's a couple of different platforms that you can start on that are always free. Um, you have uh, WordPress.com. Yeah, WordPress Blogger. Or is it Blogspot now? I don't remember. Blogger, I think it's blogger.com. Yeah. Um, Typepad? Typepad. That's the one that I actually always recommend for beginners. It's not free. It costs a few dollars every month. But unlike Blogger and WordPress.com, it offers like a lot of help services and stuff uh -huh. where you can, you know, put in a support ticket and they'll help fix your problem. So if you don't know anything, mm -hmm. it's a good place to start. What's the name of that one? Typepad. Okay. And I would say if you're just starting, forget blogging at all. Mm -hmm. And think about think about Pinterest or Instagram or something like that that is a, a blog in pictures. Yeah. So if you're doing healthy foods, you know, whatever, take pictures of your of your dinner. Um, and just see, do I like this? Uh, is is my um, topic of interest to anybody? Because it's completely free and and people will either follow you or they won't. And Pinterest and Instagram are already doing all your marketing for you. You don't have to drive yourself crazy. Really sort of make it set so that it's like, okay, we'll publish it for you. Mm -hmm. And the thing with building an audience, though, and, you know, that that's great. Contributing to other places is really great. 
when you're first starting and getting over that initial hump of, oh my god, my writing is going to be seen by people. <laughs> <laughs> people are going to see it. We were talking about that a few minutes ago. Yes. Uh, there's some information I'd like to offer. There is a, a local class called How to Write a Blog mm -hmm. where there's, you know, you come up with your laptop and it's kind of a totally all hands-on experience by Michael Ray King, who's a local publisher mm -hmm. here in Flagler County. And he runs Clearview Press. Okay. So uh, I gave her his email address. So if yeah. you like the idea of being there and have somebody physically present to walk you through stuff, mm -hmm. I think it's about $90 for six weeks. Yeah. And, you know, just to maybe think of if you prefer that rather than... Is that through, like, adult ed? I think he teaches it. He also teaches how to write the book in 30 days. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. He's really but, great. Yeah, that's, that's another thing. Pinterest and Instagram are great. I know mm -hmm. that there's... I have a ton of, like, food bloggers and yoga bloggers. But that's, like, where they're really developing their audience because they're, they're showing what it is they have. And, you know, you can put however much. Yeah. Like... There's like three paragraphs, and I'm like, whoa, okay. Mm -hmm. um, instead of, you know, and find out if, you know, if you're getting feedback from that and you think it's great feedback, that's a great little, you know, it's, a, it's an easy launching point. Or like you said, contributing to various different websites. There's tons of community websites out there that are... I do that. So, yeah. I mean, I write, but it's yeah. just the other thing. Yeah. Thank you. Then definitely, if you're already writing, you should start your own. Yeah, blog. and that, yeah, but it's just yeah. the, the starting. I mean, that's yeah. the point, you know. And yeah, I heard and you I, say. Yeah, yeah, if you want, um, if you want to get with me afterwards, I can sort of give you some tips, and I'll give you my contact information. Thank you. That's very forward. kind. Thank you. So, if you have, a, let's say, you have a blog set up already, and you're writing content <coughs> to it and things like that, in your experiences, what's the most? Where do you get the most leverage out of? other social media platforms to tie together the content that you have in the blog, or do you do that, or <coughs> is Twitter better than, um, you know, uh, Pinterest, or does it really depend on the context you're in and what it is you're actually doing? I'd say it depends on where your audience is. Um, if you're writing, like, a tech blog, your audience is in an entirely different place, like, than where my craft audience is, because it's a different demographic, they have a different level of tech savviness, and so they're, you know, they're migrating to different platforms on the internet. Um, my audience in particular is living on Facebook and Pinterest right now. Mm -hmm. And there's practically nobody on Twitter. So, but yet in the, in the tech realm, you know, everybody's over there on Twitter talking about it. And, no, and everybody's like, oh, Facebook, that is like so grandma's platform. <laughs> you know? Well, you know, that's my audience. So they're over there on Facebook, and you know the the, the tech crowd of writers and bloggers are on Google Plus and uh, cross posting. Mm -hmm. We we have a couple of different places depending upon what it is our our content is. Um, like if we post anything in regards to like tech or video games or like entertainment, like television, because I'm a TV junkie and I love to write mm -hmm. about like how emotional I get over my stories. <laughs> um, I found that places like Reddit are really great for, yeah. to drive traffic there. Um, like our, you know, women's stories that are specifically about women's experiences, we get a lot more traffic from Facebook. Um, when it comes to just like mm. funny short stories or funny, you know, uh, we get a ton of stuff from Twitter. We don't get a lot from Pinterest, but we don't a lot of attention to Pinterest mm -hmm. um, and Tumblr. We actually get quite a bit from Tumblr too. So you're cracking <laughs> me up with the with the reference to Reddit because mm -hmm. I don't think most of my audience even knows what Reddit is. <laughs> <laughs> I I love Reddit. I spend too much time on Reddit. <laughs> what about stumble upon? I I did like that years ago. And I noticed that on my older blog posts, I'm still getting tons of traffic uh -huh. that's coming yeah. from it's Stumble. We, Complete yeah. starter for me. We we have submitted some stuff to Stumble upon. Um, we submitted. We had a guy that actually wrote about um, a video game called Duty that just came out. That it was like one of the biggest games that has a female first-person shooter, whatnot. And it was, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it's kind of a big deal in terms of women in video games and that sort of like front that we're working on. Um, and let me tell you, men are mean on the internet. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> They're like, like, I have ten 
comments on that one article that all came from StumbleUpon. Oh, really? And they were that was where all of that traffic came from. And I'm saving those ten comments to write my own post wow. about how to behave like an I adult never, on the yeah. internet. I never had that experience. Just traffic coming, not people being mean. <laughs> but oh, yeah. I can definitely see because that's a man's world with the whole gaming they thing. They and they like probably you. don't like that some <laughs> woman is got top spot. <laughs> They I can see that being an issue. Them, apparently. Yeah, well, yeah, and they're, you know, they're like, it's not a game changer. I'm like, well, for girls it is. Yeah, yeah. You know, for women that like to get, play games, it's it's important for us to have, you know, the option of a female character. I don't want to look at some oh, early yeah. dude when I'm trying to snipe someone. <laughs> <laughs> when you talk about driving traffic, mm -hmm. so you have a blog. Mm -hmm. so. Where are you driving them to, or where are they? Um, well, you share links, but if you have your social network accounts, mm -hmm. your Facebook account, your Twitter account, your Pinterest, or, or whatnot, um, it's just as simple as sharing those links and using the tools that are built in to, to utilize that, like um, your, your hashtags. So when people search hashtags, they'll see that link. Um, and it's more than just posting a link. You know, you want to post something, um, I guess, character appropriate it'll fit in that's short enough to give you enough of an intro. Like with Twitter, you have about a sentence and a half to really say, okay, this is this has to grab somebody's attention amongst a thousand people in your timeline. Um, and that will, people will click through those links because they're like, oh, they see this intro and it looks interesting. So they'll click the, same, the link to see what more of it's about. And that will, like if you're doing cakes, okay, um, you'll want to use various hashtags like, you know, baking or food porn. Food porn is a huge one um, because that's people love. Because every minute, like for me, I like talking about good government. But every minute I spend, my articles have to be fact-based. They're edited. Right. They, I have to do all the research. It's not just my opinion. These are, you know, as close yeah. to journalistic standards as you can get mm -hmm. for a blog. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and so every minute I spend doing that is a minute I'm not tucking my kids in bed or, you know, whatever. So for me it's important, and I'm not making money off of it, so for me it's really important to ask myself, is activity or is it progress? And how long have you been doing it? Um, I started with Policy Mike right after the election, mm -hmm. so November of 2012. Yeah. But I started blogging for campaign stuff and national political stuff in 2009. Yeah, that's another thing that's, that's going to drive traffic once you've created your space is talking about it. Mm -hmm. You know, he bugged me forever to come to Entrepreneur Night, and I'm fairly antisocial. It's really hard to like pry me out of <laughs> my computer space, um, but it has done great things because now I'm I'm better at going out and talking to people, and I'm. It's really hard when you have something that's very new to brag about your product <laughs> and say, hey, this is awesome because you haven't gotten the feedback yet that says, hey, this is awesome. Um, and so, like you said before, you have to have this certain level of, of almost narcissism to say, you know what, I do, I do believe in this. That's why I wear the tiara because I'm like, hey, I'm awesome. <laughs> this is the reminder. <laughs> so how do you move from just putting your... your narcissistic thoughts out on the internet to to advertising. Um, we don't do a lot of advertising, Nancy. She'd be the one to talk um, about that. Your website starts to get big enough that you start to get emails from people saying, can I advertise on your website? And you say, oh, yeah, I guess that would be okay. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> and it kind of goes from there. How much can they offer to pay you to advertise? I mean, I know there's probably a range well, it, of... Uh, it depends on the specific audience that you're dealing with. Okay. The, the, the CPM is, it varies widely depending on the niche that you're working in right. and everything. And so. CPM is cost per what? Cost per thousand. Cost per thousand. Thousand impressions. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, oh. So a, a dear friend of mine is a state senator by the name of Jeremy Ring, and he was one of the original founding members of Yahoo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how he got that job, he was in New York City, and he was working for a large advertising company that bought advertising for um, John Deere and Volvo and Caterpillar and all the big names. And he heard of this thing called Yahoo, um, and he called them and had no idea, of course, that he was giving the, getting the two founders 
answer the phone, you know, from their garage in Everything California. Starts in, California, California starts somewhere. in a garage. <laughs> so he said, um, so John Deere and Volvo and somebody else wants, you know, I'm looking for advertising space for them, and I think this thing that you've created might be a great place for them. So I was w wondering what your advertising rate sheets are. And they're like, we don't sell advertising. And he <laughs> said, that's stupid. Um, <laughs> expletive, stupid. And uh, they were like, they of course were offended and hung up on him. And um, the next day, one of the original members, the founding members of Yellow Magazines, mm -hmm. and we now have basically only a couple of small niche magazines left that are basically books that are produced every two months. They, you know, they're like $15 cover prices. Mm -hmm. They're not what you would consider a, you know, a $5 newsstand magazine anymore because their business model, because of their cover price, is not dependent on advertising, although they do accept some advertising. And it's completely changed the business model of um, publishing in general. Mm -hmm. And paper publishing is just collapsed. It's collapsing everywhere, but we've seen a very accelerated version of it in the crafts industry in general. And now all the, the surviving publications, several of them from the magazine side, including the one that I edit, have gone digital, and we still publish as magazines, but we're a digital magazine. Right. Right. Some of them have just become completely extinct in favor of the websites like my husband and I own, and you know, and we rule the world now. It used to be that when you went to the trade show to try to get media credentials and you said you were a blogger, they were like, eh, I don't know, bloggers, they're not real media. Now I yeah. rip over them, you know, like, you know, eight, ten years ago when I first started doing this. Now it's like, yeah, whatever, just give us this, this, and this to prove that you're like, you know, a serious blogger and no problem, you're in, whatever, and, and nobody bats an eyelid and, and, you know, they trip over themselves to accommodate you because they know that's, that's where the future's going. Well, except for Martha Stewart. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> Martha, did you guys hear what Martha Stewart did? So is my audience, for some bizarre reason, my audience tends to skew old. So they're reading a digital publication, but they're also still out there. They're also the tiny subset of the market that is still out there buying newsstand paper publications. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, yeah, but the 10 of you who are still out there aren't enough. <laughs> right? you know, and, 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 and it's like, you know, and they're all like, but, 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 and it's like, yeah, but you know what, if there were enough of you, the magazines wouldn't be shutting down. <laughs> well, and it is very generational. I, I work with magazines, and um, take, for example, Newsweek, when they decided to go to all digital. That was one of, that's my client. Mm -hmm. And they went from a 1.3 print readership to two, barely 200,000 readers right now, all digital. Mm -hmm. And they're and going they, print again. They and just they just announced. announced they're going back to print. So, you know, you have to ask yourself, I mean, we had a million phone calls of people canceling and saying, but we want the print. I don't own a computer. So it is very generational. It is. But I just met with another one of my clients <coughs> yesterday. And her dilemma is how to get advertisers to pay for digital space. They don't feel they even need to pay for it. They'll pay for it in the print publication, but if they replicate the, the magazine uh, online, they don't they won't pay for it. L'Oreal will not pay for it. P and G will pay twelve percent of you know your total readership. It, it's it's a dilemma. It's a huge one. So that's where I was kind of going with how do you how do you and, and I'm probably trying to draw some parallels here that are beyond, the, you know, really the content of, of the main discussion. But just in advertising in general, how do you get people to pay for it? Because my my magazine clients who put out digital products are telling me they don't want to pay for it. There's two sets of advertisers basically that I've encountered. There's the people who get it as far as the digital realm is concerned. They're the ones who are sitting there going, okay, 
I want this and I want you to encode the link this way because I'm going to count the clicks and I'm, I'm trying, you know, they're the ones who are like in love with digital advertising because they can track it like on this like really super finite level. Mm -hmm. And they get it, they understand exactly what digital advertising can offer them. Then there's the, and again, it's probably a, a, somewhat a generational thing. Mm -hmm. Then there's the people who don't value the digital publications because to them, they're print snobs, just like Martha Stewart. They're of a generation where they were taught if it's not in print, it's not, you know, it, it's not worth it. And yet, the interaction that you can get from digital, the data that you can get from digital, is so much, so much more immediate, and but that just doesn't it's compute for some people. Yeah, it, it's it's absolutely provable. I take a yeah. print magazine, I send it to your home. I can go tell an advertiser, well, Nancy, you know, from from a, a database, I, I've determined she has three other people in her home. So let's say those three people, you have four total looking at your print publication, no way to prove it. You put it online, I can tell you how long you looked at a certain page, how many times you've returned to that page, and it scares the hell out of the, the magazine industry because that's how they that's how they establish their advertising rate base. Mm -hmm. So, they, you so can do things like, like they almost don't want to know it. Yeah. They're, they're turning a blind eye because how are you gonna get someone to to buy into the theory that they pass the, they pass the information along mm -hmm. when I can prove to you that they don't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, can do, you can do amazing things with digital advertising. You can do things like A-B testing mm -hmm. to see which version of an ad sells better. Mm -hmm. You can serve different ads um, at like different times of day or to different you know, people who pop, pop up from different geographic regions. You can serve different, different ads to there's, you know, the, it, it's customizable in a way that you can't when you're putting it on ink and paper. And uh, there are people who get that and there are people who don't. And our attitude as a digital publisher is simply to target the people who get it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and just forget about the rest. And that, and those people are growing. They're going to continue and exactly, to grow. And, and, they are, and, and some people are being forced to get it because A, they're being priced out of the print market or B, there just simply isn't a, a suitable print outlet left for them to go into, so they're forced to turn to, to digital. And then once they get there, they're like, oh, okay, I guess this is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. But you kind of have to drag them into it. And, you know, it's kind of like what we're doing with consumers. It's, you know, you kind of have to drag them into it. And, but once some of them get there to the digital publication, they start to realize, oh, man, you mean you can put a video in my magazine article? Mm -hmm. You can make that link clickable? Instead of room for one photo in the article, you can show me 30? Oh wait, this is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. But that's mm -hmm. where I think, well, this is where I'm trying to draw a parallel because I think blogging is the direction, headed in the direction of completely replacing magazines. Because everyone in my industry wants to replicate a print magazine and put it online. It's not a magazine. It, it's it's not. It doesn't even it come close to the definition of what a magazine is. I mean, we go and you, you purchase this, and it's a, a a total of related material. You can go on the internet and type in, you know, Google, food porn, whatever. You don't have to buy healthy eating or you know, all these different magazines to get to get a world of content. So I kind of wonder, well, why do we even call it a magazine? It's Isn't it more blogging? It is, and, and coming from somebody who works in both of those formats, because we do put out, a, I, as the editor of Creative Retailer, I help put out a digital magazine every two months that is nothing but a paper magazine that has been reduced to digital format. We have pages that you scroll through and you know we have page numbers and the whole table of contents and letter from the editor it looks exactly like a print magazine except for a few of the extra digital features that have been built into it and doing both um it appeals kind of appeals to different audiences and we do different things i can be very immediate with my blogging like when i get a breaking 
press release from somebody saying that they've been bought by another company, I can put that up today. Mm -hmm. Obviously with the digital magazine, we can't cover those sorts of things because even though we're doing digital, there still is lag. When we were doing print, <coughs> print lag, stuff was three, four months old before it went to press. Mm -hmm. Now we're down to a couple weeks. But it's still too long to handle anything that's time sensitive. So what we do with Creative Retailer is it's non-time sensitive content. Um, we'll do stuff about like preparing for the holiday season for retailers. You know, we'll do an issue that's about that. So it's time aware, but it's not stuff that gets stale. It's not it's not like that information is gonna change between the time it's written and the time it goes to press. So that's kind of how we separate it out, but it is definitely, there's a line, because most of the people who write for the magazine are also bloggers, and are, you know, blogging things. What you're really paying for is you're paying for the convenience of having all of those people bundled together in one place, in a package, with the um, kind of cohesive, piecing together of things like the themes that we put on the magazine and stuff. You know, I, I believe that, um, as I'm listening to this, it must, it must be age sensitive. Because even though I have no issue with uh, online magazines, when they have the video, I prefer to read than to watch the I'm video. the same way. Uh, I'm the same yes, way. I, There's nothing that bugs me more than when I'm trying to read my news mm -hmm. and they they give me a blurb and then they want to show me the video. And I'm like, I don't want to watch the video. I like my silence. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, I also have ADHD and I'm a very fast reader and I find that the videos tend to be way too slow paced for me. I, I can be done reading the article in like 20 seconds and it's like they're still doing the pre-roll ad on the video. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm done. I'm out of here. My son, apparently there's a way to make the video go faster and you could, he's a tech person so he knows. So he, when he watches videos, if it's an hour, he makes it take like 40 minutes. Really? And like, because he watches a lot of stuff um, like, uh, what is that, Mixer G. Um, that's techie stuff and mm -hmm. you know, entrepreneur stuff, and they're like hour-long videos, and he makes them go by in like 40 minutes because he doesn't have the patience. Yeah, it's, it's just like you know, I'm just sitting there. But apparently, I'm that's a thing. Just, like, I'm not <laughs> going to sit through a 15-second pre-roll ad when I can literally read the entire article mm -hmm. in that amount of time. It's just you know, I, I don't care that much, yeah. you know. Yeah. Or when it just pops up and starts playing right away. That, that my husband can tell you mind. how often I sit in our office oh, and swear that. at those things. <laughs> I hate that. Oh. I think. I think in terms of the news meet like print versus bloggers, I think you'll eventually in a few years, I think news would jump the gun on getting oh, yeah. rid of their print because I think it is a generation thing. I think that there's people that are over a certain demographic that they prefer their magazine subscriptions because they don't want to, they don't want to have anything to do with the internet. They get on the internet to check Facebook and look at grandkids and that's fine. Um, and even now I, I love getting certain things in the mail that I'm subscribed to, but I have read all of the stuff digitally first. And I, like you said, you're going to find a lot of stuff that's not, you'll find the initial information. Do we do banner ads? Do we do link ads? Um, so I'm not a big fan of it. I, it's just, it's one of those things that I'm like, it's too complicated for me to figure out and I don't want to pay somebody to figure it out. So I'm going to find alternate income sources. So we offer editing services. We offer writing services. We offer, we have a cafe press store that has all sorts of stuff that we sell. Um, right now, I'm about 10% of my income comes from the website. It's mostly enough to blow to sell. You know, anything that I've, I've put into the website, I've gotten back. Well, and there's ways to make money, I think, even if it's not your income. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's a, you know, it's a profile builder. Um, you should, if you, if you have a particular expertise, you should be on um, uh, HARO, help a reporter out. You should subscribe to them. They will email you uh, when reporters need it. In experts in your area, in your area of expertise, it's help a reporter out. Help a reporter. Yeah, um, and there's another one called uh, RadioGuestList.com. I think it is. Um, those all 
solidify you as a thought leader in your particular niche. Um, so for me, it's much more the blogging is a, is a, is a professional tool that I use um, to kind of grow my, my personal brand. Your brand. Mm -hmm. Personal brand, isn't that a bad word these days? Well, you know, um, you, you, do, you do have to also be careful with that because I'm super outspoken. So, um, you know, I'm sure I've got 75 gazillion things in print um, that I've said, some of it flippantly. Um, and, uh, it, you know, and that comes back, right? So. Yeah, especially if you have somebody doing opposition research. Yes. <laughs> Definitely so, Google yourself so, from time to time. So if I were to run again, you know, um, even even like Policy Mike, even if I've asked questions on Policy Mike, raised points on Policy Mike, that where I never even gave my own personal opinion, just is it time that America starts thinking about it this way, gun control or whatever, right? So if I ever decide to run again, I will be a flaming Nancy Pelosi liberal who hates guns, you know, and whatever. So um, not not because I not because anybody ever has me on record saying I don't like the Second Amendment, but because I blogged about a question that I thought was important for the country to clarify association. About. So yeah. So if you are, if this is some kind of somehow tied to your profession. Um, you should you should consider that seriously. That your next boss is going to find that you know the guy who's interviewing guy girl who's interviewing you for the next job is going to see all that stuff. So your mom and dad when they Google you, they're going to see this. <laughs> your pastor. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so before you start putting food you? porn on everything, you remember yeah, your yeah. pastor. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, as a wellness coach, that's what I'm trying to. I I uh, write a lot about wellness issues um, so and that's but see basically I wasn't using my blog to to create like this brand for myself but I'm trying to now up until you know recently I was just blogging and I had a job blogging and I cross posted to my blog um, and I never really had ads on my blog so um, I really was never making money off of my blog and Basically now what I'm trying to do is most of what I've, I've been writing since 2006. So I have tons and tons of posts in my blog that you can search and anyone can find. And um, they're mostly on things that have to do with wellness in some way, whether it's emotional wellness or physical wellness, nutritional wellness. Okay. You know, it's a, it's a huge area. And, that, and, and I'm hoping there's a to make my blog want people to want my service as a wellness coach then. That I'm hoping, that's there's, what I'm... There's a lot of networking opportunities for you in the general area in terms of wellness. Yeah. I know a lot more. Well, and you said, you said cross-posting that um, it's, it's important for you to keep your links. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So, for example, if I was writing a piece on Policy yes. Mike about veterans' issues, um, well, I've got 10 other stories already on Policy Mike on veterans issues. So I would want to link to myself. Mm -hmm. right? Why would yeah. I link to another blogger or mm -hmm. a HuffPo or mm -hmm. whatever article, USA Today article, and not me? Um, so you can drive, you can keep driving more traffic to your Just own. blogging, though. It's like any kind of web content, obviously. Mm -hmm. About um, blogging when you're first starting, too, and linking, I found when I was working for BlogHer, the reason why they hired me was in the beginning when they started they were trying to bring notice to other women bloggers so when I would work when I would write a piece on wellness whatever it was I would also search women women's blogs on the internet and I would try to link to at least a half a dozen of them because Did then you're like, helping yeah. them and then they come and read you right. and so it's like kind of a give and take thing it's nothing like um, like you're not trying to, it's like not a manipulative type thing, it's actually a helpful type thing. Like you yeah. want to um, help other women who are And everybody's gonna similar. retweet or whatever something exactly. that they were linked in. So. Exactly, mm -hmm. so, and, and I found that when I did link to people, some of them had never had that happen before. So when they checked their Google Analytics and saw that they got a lot of traffic from my blog, 
or from blog her um, they actually would come back and comment and say thank you for linking to me and you know right. it's just a, one of those things it's a nice thing to do and it also helps we call yeah. that a blog hop in the scrapbook industry oh really everybody, <laughs> everybody will get together and they'll be part of some ring where it's like well everybody made christmas cards this week and we're having a blog hop you know because we uh -huh. made them all with the same company's products or whatever and then somebody at the start will post the list and it's like okay i'm the start of the hop now, for the next card, you have to go to this person's website, and then they have the link to the next person's oh, website, okay. and you go from one That's site cool. to another, That's and, and it's all part of like the same yeah. challenge. Or what do they call it? Well, it's like a progressive dinner. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Yeah. It basically yeah. is, yeah. But I want to go back to something Heather said earlier about the reputation management, because when you start putting yourself out there, people will start to get some sort of impression from you, but they're getting a one-dimensional impression from you of of only what you're putting out there on your website because they probably that's probably all they know about you and so you have to think about what you're putting out there and how it is going to look to people it, depending on you know like if you're trying to be a salesperson or, or whatever I inadvertently got myself a really bad reputation wow. in <laughs> the scrapbook industry I know it's hard to believe. It's a glue gun thing. It's a glue gun thing. And actually, it's funny you should say it's a glue gun thing because, because I was writing content that was extremely different than what everybody else in the industry was writing. The scrapbook industry is very happy, happy, joy, joy. We love everybody and everything, and isn't life wonderful? I crashed the scene and started writing about all the bad stuff. I just, the stuff that nobody else was writing about, you know, who's going bankrupt, who's suing who. I started writing the actual hard news of the industry, which nobody else was doing. Mm. Mm. And I have a BA in communications. I was qualified to do it, and I did it in a very even-handed way. Mm. And I developed, there was a certain group in the scrapbook industry who, was, who very quickly developed respect for me mm. for the way that I handled those stories, but there was a little, a, a large segment of people that quickly decided that because I was touching issues that were considered untouchable that I was some sort of monstrous bitch <laughs> and that I was like oh my you know the big bad you know yeah ogre Stressful. or something like that and I would have and, and when I it wasn't really this as like some kind of cheeky sitcom <laughs> no, and, and it wasn't it's like the DIY network. It's like ballroom dancing. Who knew? Yeah. And it was and it wasn't until I actually started going to the trade shows regularly and giving these people a chance to meet me in person and they would start to talk to me and they were like, Oh my gosh, she's like actually nice and has a sense of humor and you know, it like, you know, is and it was like yeah, it's like just because that is what I write doesn't mean that I'm like they you know they, they thought I was some sort of you know like stormtrooper or something because of the content that I wrote. So you have to think about and you know and now it's like I can't walk five feet on the trade show floor without somebody going Nancy oh my god and giving me a hug and, and everything else because they all know me now. But I had to overcome that initial impression that I inadvertently created through the type of content that I was producing. But the thing is, that was a good thing because that yeah. probably was a niche that needed to and it be was, yeah. and that escalated you quicker, probably in, within. And your... that is a niche that I carved out that to this day I still own, and because of that, I mm -hmm. have a magazine editing job. I I get all sorts of work so what, and everything because I'm the only person mistake, doing it. Really wasn't. <laughs> yeah, it's like I, I, you know, I always tell my husband, it's like I oh I got a call to do such and such and such. Um, I wrote about yoga for a really long time, so we've got some good contacts in the wellness community yeah. for you. Um, but there's you know a lot of photography sites do that. There's a lot of brain pickings. They do it. Um, so I think it's going to be something that's going to start catching on in terms of do you like this article? Tip the author. You know, because a lot of content, a lot of bloggers, like people that contribute to our site, people that contribute to sites like Mind Body Green, they have half a million readers a day. Wow. And they don't pay their bloggers. Huffington Post, they don't oh, pay yeah. their bloggers. So I think you're going to find a lot of community sites that say, hey, you know what, I give you all the free promotion in the world. And... Okay, so I just attended the Women's Blogging Bowl Conference and I have some inspiration now to go forward and do my blog. They were so enlightening and um, I'm pretty excited.
Cool. So I just want to thank Kai and Office Divi for the phenomenal panel that we just had on the women bloggers. There were three fantastic women. They gave us so many ideas. They got us totally energized on what to do and how to go forward. And this is like the perfect way to start 2014. Thank you, okay. Kai. The panelists were great tonight. It was a wonderful time, and I'm so happy I came. I learned a lot. Thank you.